you, you've kind of gone back and forth between describing the global citizen, which is still elite. We travel around the world, we're home everywhere, nowhere, we have multiple identities, we are socially concerned, we have the tools and the education to actually do something about it. And then there, there's this predatory inequality that's also happening simultaneously. We're becoming equally more connected and more disconnected. So if we could think of four or five principles, moral principles for global citizenship that would help all individuals start to move along a path that would create a less predatory um, socially concerned elite, what, what might be some of them? You know, I think one is this idea of, I think when we look at these issues, particularly these issues of, of equity, um, they're issues that somehow make us a lot more susceptible to ideology than fact finding. Hmm. Um, and I just think the thing number one I would say is, you know, I think we need to just get rid of all of our ideological blinders when we look at them. And the number, when you talk about these issues, whether it's on the right or the left, the, the stuff people will tell you, it just doesn't match reality in so many ways. Rising tide lifts all boats, or people on the left will say, like, you know, talking about family breakdown is inherently racist. There, there's just so much, there's so, there's so much bad, sloppy ideological thinking that I think screws up actual fact and observation and gathering about what is actually hmm. bedeviling the lives of poor people. Um, I think another... Move beyond ideology. Yeah. Um, I think another is to, instead of questioning the systems that benefit you last, question the systems that benefit you first. Um, and, you know, if, if none of your ideas threaten your position, you probably don't have very good ideas. And, and it doesn't mean you have to like, quit your life that day. I mean, the, the life is complicated. Um, and it's okay to be a person at Goldman who is doing their job and trying to do some good and wrestling with the duality of that. Um, but it's also okay to hold in your idea, the, uh, hold in your mind the idea that in a world that was you know, arrayed better, maybe this job shouldn't exist. And I need to just sit with that. Um, and yet I need to feed my family, and yet, and yet. Um, so I think exploring arguments against interest um, as a real practice, place of truth. Um, and a third I'll say, and it's kind of related, I've been thinking a lot about, uh, I feel everywhere in, in this many communities that talk a lot about this issue, and particularly elite gathering talk about this issue, the, the governing philosophy is kind of win-win-win. I call it win-win-winism. Um, and positivity is, is great. I like positivity. Um, but I think when it comes to a lot of these issues, a lot of the reason, you know, not all the reason, but a lot of the reason people live hard lives in a lot of places in the world is not just the failure of the penetration of this product or the failure of the market to reach here, or it's, it, it's not just some things that haven't happened yet. There is predation, you know, um, just to speak of India, which I know better than other places. You know, the reason a lot of people are living in poverty in India is because of other people in India. Mm -hmm. um, there's also other things, like we can get solar and this and that. But like, let's begin with the truth that India is sort of a recovering apartheid layer upon society layer upon layer upon. that has never been called an apartheid society, you know, and, and that you don't get over that fast. And that there are some people in the way of other people. And that's a win-lose. And I think in a lot of these circles, it's uncomfortable to talk about win-lose mm -hmm. and it's gauche and it's rude. And, and I understand the, the lure of positivity and you turn on CNN and there's so much negativity that you want to be an alternative to that. But I think people in these kind of roles going into these things, to sit with the idea that some of the hard lives people are living are win-lose situations. And the role of speaking truth in those situations is identifying who needs to lose and helping them lose. 